Hello Internet, my name is Travis Nielsen. This is Dev Tips for Designers, a YouTube channel where we talk about all the Cody bits. In the last three videos, we've talked about the history of HTML5 and the philosophy behind it. Then we talked about the DOM, or the Document Object Model, which is a description of how everything on the web page works together. So if you haven't watched those three videos yet, I recommend that you do. They lay a really good foundation for today's topic. However, it's not required to understand what we're talking about today. In today's video, we're going to talk about HTML tags, the fundamental building block of the internet. After that, we're going to go through a list of the top 10 most often used HTML tags. Okay, let's look at how to build an HTML tag. You can think of it as a sandwich, where the two pieces of bread are the opening and closing bits of the tag, and the meat, lettuce, and cheese, and tomato, and pickles are the contents of your website. Let me explain it this way. The first thing you do is take the content of your site. So in this case, it's a paragraph. And then you wrap the HTML tag around the content. So in this case, it'll be a P tag or a, a paragraph tag. The thing to remember is that all HTML tags can optionally carry attributes, which are little key value pairs that can help to further define the content and functionality of the tag. Consider an anchor tag. It's a classic example. There's an attribute of an href, and that href should contain the URL of whatever you want the hyperlink to point to. Keep in mind that semantics tell us that we should use the tag that best describes the content of whatever we're marking up. For example, a navigation item would go in the nav tag a header or footer in their respective tags. Some tags are ambiguous in meaning, like a span or a div, and some are not, like a paragraph or an article. Let's run through a list of the most commonly used HTML tags. First is not actually one tag, but a group of tags we call headings. These are H1 to H6. These elements rank in importance according to the number in their name. The H1 element has the highest rank, where the H6 element will have the lowest rank. If two elements have the same number, they are in the same level in the rank of importance. The P tag. We've already seen this one. It's for paragraphs. If you have a paragraph, wrap it in a P tag. Easy. M represents the stress of emphasis on its contents. The stress being referred to as linguistic. If spoken, this stress can change the pronunciation of the word and can change the linguistic meaning of the word in a sentence. Remember, by default, M also italicizes that which you wrap it around. Strong. It represents a strong importance of its content. By default, this will bold the content that you wrap it around. The anchor, or the A, or the link. These little guys are the magic that make the web the web. You wrap an A tag around any word that you want to create a hyperlink out of. You can then use the attribute of a href, like we talked about before, to point that link to a specific place on the internet. The group of tags that are the UL and the LI. The UL means unordered list. It represents the entire list of items where the order of the list is unimportant. The LI means list item. It is the individual item in the list. You can often find many of these inside of a UL. An HR is a horizontal rule. It represents a paragraph level thematic break. It's a line. The IMG tag represents an image. It relies heavily on its attributes. The SRC, or the source of the image, is the URL that can be found on the internet. The ALT attribute is the image's fallback content if the image URL cannot be displayed. And finally, the div. Good old div. The div element simply divides content. It has no semantic meaning at all. So it becomes very useful when creating visual layouts. You'll see these all over the place. Okay, so this is a small taste of all the HTML tags available to you. Uh, I'm providing some links down below that I want you to go through and take a look at. If you can, start right away, begin using the tags and get really familiar with them. It's the only way you're ever going to be good at writing HTML. Okay, that's it for today. Please check out the other three videos in this series called HTML5 Basics, 
where we cover the history, philosophy, and physiology behind HTML5. And if you haven't yet, please don't forget to subscribe, subscribe to DevTips. It's a wonderful place to learn development. And yes, subscribe to DevTips.